It's Friday, and you know what that means. The weekend is here, except if you run your own business, and then every day is a work day. Okay, so let's talk about work-life balance. Work-life balance is a myth. It's made up. That's not true. Work-life balance is just a fancy term that people use to set a boundary between work and their personal lives. Makes sense, right? But if you run your own business or you work from home or you just are a workaholic or you really love what you do, sometimes work-life balance feels non-existent. I mean, think about it. For some people, entrepreneurs specifically who work from home, they set their own schedule, they have their own hours, they can work whenever, wherever they want. So the lines get really blurred between what's work and what's personal time. Now, this is really interesting to me because I think there are two major schools of thoughts as to how work-life balance is supposed to work. On one hand, we have people who think that work should be separate completely from the personal life. That means that when I'm at work, I'm working, and when I'm at home, I'm not. And you know, honestly, that seems pretty healthy. It seems pretty nice. It seems like you'd be able to clock off, you know, go home, spend time with the kids, make dinner, do whatever you need, and, and then be rejuvenated for the next day. But then there are other people that think work-life balance is a myth. And it kind of makes sense for some of those people, right? Like. You're a salaried employee, you don't have set hours, maybe you work from home, maybe you're an entrepreneur, maybe you work for a nonprofit, and the work that you do is all encompassing in your life. And you know, when I was working at other companies, I felt like work-life balance was much more achievable because I would get off work and then I would come home and I would never think about work again until the next day when I'd have to get up in the morning and drive into the office. But as an entrepreneur or someone who works for themselves, there's no boundary like that, at least in the beginning. But now, because I run my own business, it's a lot harder to set those boundaries. It begins to blur the lines of what's work and what's personal. Before we moved into this house, this desk was actually in our bedroom. So my commute when I was working at the previous company I was at was literally five steps from the bed to the desk. And I cannot tell you how quickly that commute got even more exhausting than the 30 minute drive that I would do pre-pandemic. Because my life was no longer separate from work. You know, for some people, it's okay for their job to be all encompassing for a while because that's all that there is. But for me, I needed that separation in order to maintain my sanity. And I thought that having a dedicated office space would help a lot. And it has in some ways, but still, working for myself now presents all of these new and different and difficult challenges. But even though I no longer have to commute every day, 30 minutes each way or five steps from the bed, the lines are still blurred because of my brain. See, before I had the benefit of being able to leave my job at my job, I didn't have to come home and do work and, and try to figure things out in my personal space. I had it separated. But now I'm at a different point in life where all of a sudden work has evolved into something that I deeply care about because it is my passion. I'm working on something that I love and something that I want to see succeed and I have more of a vested interest in it. So for that reason, my brain is just constantly trying to solve the problems that we face every day. How do I get more clients? How do I make the next NGMI video? How do I make lunch? Well, that's, see that, this is what I mean. That's personal, like what's going on? Now that work is so deeply ingrained, I have to figure out ways to set more hard boundaries of when I'm working, where I'm working, and for how long. For example, if I'm thinking about work now, I'll actually make myself physically go into my office space. If I get a call on the phone that's work related, I will go upstairs and sit in my chair so that I can be in the space that I normally work in. If I have a thought that's work related in the middle of the night and I can't sleep because it keeps jumbling around my head and it won't shut up, I'll just go ahead and pull out my phone, write that thought down and then revisit it 
tomorrow. But quite possibly the most important aspect of separating work from personal life is actually taking time to establish rhythms and routines that are for your personal life. And this is such a huge thing that I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with and maybe not a lot of people talk about is we have all of these systems set up for work, but how is your personal life doing? To be really intentional about me spending time with my family, me seeing my friends and making sure that I'm getting away from work every so often so that I'm just not spending all of my time in the hermit hole. When we first started Amarlo, one of my mentors told me, be prepared to work really, really long hours and really, really late nights. You will have no more personal life and everything you know will be changed because of your company. I just didn't want to accept that. I wanted to see if it was possible to build a business in a way that does not destroy everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis because I want to live through this and not resent the business that I'm building. So because of that, I'm always looking to improve on ways that I can separate my work from my life and maintain more of a work-life balance because I'm of the mindset that it is a balance and it doesn't all have to blend together. But I'm human and no one's perfect. Eventually all things are just gonna slip through the cracks and I might fail at maintaining my work-life balance. And that's where I hope to have had enough investment in my personal relationships to where people can come to me and say, Jeremy, we haven't seen you in six 16 months, what have you been doing? Can you please come outside? You're starting to get really, really, really pale. So if you feel like you're struggling with work-life balance, it, you know, so is everyone else. That's sad. So if you're struggling to give yourself a good work-life balance, ask other people around you how they think you're doing. Make sure that you have those close relationships that can check in on you, like Brian said in our last NGMI video about burnout because the last thing that you wanna be doing while you're building a business is get burnt out. And blurring work with life and not having any sort of boundaries, probably gonna get there a little quicker than you think. Or maybe not, who knows? You could be totally different from everyone in the world and everything could be going perfectly for you. If that's the case, please send me an email because I am dying.